everyone! Today we're going to learn how to make this cotton dishcloth utilizing the moss or granite stitch. You'll learn to chain, single crochet, half double crochet, and finish off your work, as well as learning how to make this stitch, which is just using single crochet and chain stitch. It looks beautiful and it's really simple. To start off, you're going to need one ball of kitchen cotton yarn. I'm using Lily Sugar and Cream, but there are plenty of other brands out there that'll work as well as a size H or five millimeter hook. To get started, we're gonna make a slip knot. Just make a loop like this, then reach through your loop and pull your thread through to make a knot. You should be able to tug on the working end of your yarn, that's the end that's attached to your ball of yarn, and have the loop change sizes. Next, we're gonna insert our hook into that loop you're gonna pull on your yarn until the loop is snug on your hook, but not so tight that it can't freely slide back and forth. Now we're going to move into learning to chain. A chain is the foundation of many crochet projects and is super simple. All you do is wrap your yarn around your hook and then pull through the loop on your hook. You'll see on one side of your chain, there's this kind of V and on the other side, there's a little bump. And we're gonna do that again. Wrap your yarn around your hook, pull through. Wrap your yarn, pull through. Wrap your yarn, pull through. And you'll start to see this chain coming together. To count how many chains we have done, all you need to do is look for the Vs. So there's one here, that's one stitch, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna keep going until we have 26 of those. At the end, I'm going to count back and make sure that I have 26 stitches. It should be about this long. Now, we're going to skip the first chain. So see this V right here? We're going to skip it. And we're going to do one row of single crochet. So starting with the second chain away from my hook, I'm going to insert my hook under those Vs. So making sure I have both loops on my hook. I'm going to wrap my yarn around my crochet hook, the same as I did for the chain, and pull through that first V. Then I'm going to wrap my yarn around my crochet hook again and pull through both remaining loops on my hook. And you've done your first stitch. So to repeat, you, ins you find the next V, that's right here. Insert your hook under both loops of the V. Wrap your yarn around your crochet hook. Pull through the V. Wrap your yarn around your crochet hook, pull through both loops on your hook. And one more time, we find the next V, insert our hook under both loops of the V, wrap our yarn around our hook, pull through, wrap the yarn around your hook, and pull through one more time. So now I've done the first three stitches, you're going to do this all the way to the end of your row, and I'll catch up back with you then. Alrighty, so I'm back with my entire foundation row of single crochet finished, and now we're going to move on to the granite stitch. At the end of each row, we're going to chain one, and then you're going to turn your work over. In the first stitch of each row, we're going to single crochet. So again, you find that V, ignoring the chain one we just made, make sure it's into a stitch. Wrap your yarn, pull through, wrap your yarn, pull through. Then next, we're going to chain one. So again, wrap your yarn and pull through the loop on your hook without inserting into a stitch. And we're going to skip that next V below it to create a hole. And working into the next V after that, your next stitch, you're going to insert your hook, wrap your yarn, pull through, wrap your yarn and pull through both loops on your hook to make a single crochet. And you'll see there's a little hole in your work where you chained one and skipped a stitch. And now we're gonna do that again. So chain one, skip the stitch below it, single crochet into the next stitch after that. Chain one, skip, single crochet. And you're gonna do this for the entire rest of your row. So 
So at the end of our row, we single crochet into the last stitch, chain one, and turn our work again. Now, in this next row, we're gonna single crochet into the first stitch, remember to ignore your chain one, single crochet into the next stitch, and we're always gonna single crochet at the beginning and end of every row. Now, after that first single crochet, we're gonna look, and the next stitch is where we chained one and skipped the stitch below it in the previous row. This time, we're gonna insert our hook into that hole left by the chain one, skip one, and we're gonna single crochet there. Then we're gonna chain one and skip the single crochet that we stitched in the previous row and work directly into that next hole created by our chain one, skip one in the previous row and create another single crochet. Chain one, skip the stitch, work into our chain one, skip one hole from the previous row and just keep doing that for the rest of your row. You'll notice at the end of your row that you just single crocheted and there's only one stitch left. Rather than chaining one and skipping one, because that would be a bit odd for the end of the row, we're just gonna single crochet immediately in the next stitch. Once again, we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and single crochet into the first stitch. To figure out what to do next, we're gonna look at the row below this one. In the row below, there's a single crochet here, so we're gonna chain one and skip it. After that, there's a hole from one of our chain one skip ones, so we're gonna single crochet there. Chain one, skip the next stitch, work into the next hole, and repeat that all the way down your row. This is the basis of the granite stitch. That's all you need to do. Every time there's a hole in the previous row from a chain one skip one, you single crochet into it. Every time there's a single crochet in the previous row, you chain one and skip it. You're gonna keep going like this for however large you want your washcloth to be. I created that one single crochet foundation row and then 15 rows of moss stitch for my dishcloth, but you can always make yours larger or smaller. So keep going until your dishcloth is as tall as you'd like it to be, and then come back to this video and I'll show you what to do next. I finished with all of my rows of moss stitch, so now I'm gonna add one final row of single crochet across the top here. I'm going to single crochet right into this first stitch, and then single crochet into the hole left by the chain one, skip one from the row below, single crochet into the next stitch, and so on for the whole row. And this is just to make sure that it matches that first row of single crochet that we started off with at the beginning of our dishcloth. You could stop right here, fasten off and weave in all of your ends and have a perfectly fine dishcloth, but I'm gonna show you how to put a border on this and a little loop that'll make it easier to hang it off of any hooks that you have. Just like at the end of all rows before, you're gonna chain one. But then instead of flipping the dishcloth over, we're just gonna turn it 90 degrees. We're going to single crochet all down the side of this dishcloth. If you look, you'll see there are some little holes, it looks like, right at the end of each row, and that's what we're gonna be working into. I'm gonna find the first hole right here, and I'm gonna put two single crochet into that first hole. Now in each other hole until the very end corner, we're gonna put one single crochet. You're gonna count how many you put so that you make sure you do the same up the other side of your dishcloth. All right, I'm at the last hole of this side of my dishcloth, so I'm gonna add two stitches here. And then I'm gonna turn my work 90 degrees. To minimize the number of ends I'll need to weave in at the end of this, this dishcloth, I'm gonna hold the tail end of my yarn flat to my dishcloth while I'm crocheting the bottom part of the border. If you find this difficult, it's totally fine to just kind of leave it hanging out and go back with a yarn needle and weave it in at the end. So these bumps 
are the bottom of your starting chain and we're going to be working into those and put one stitch into each for the bottom of your dishcloth. As you can see, I'm holding my tail tight to the bottom of my dishcloth as I crochet so that it stays underneath these stitches and it gets hidden really neatly and easily. Once I'm done with this bottom row, I'm going to turn my work 90 degrees again. I'm going to find the first hole on the side of my dishcloth right here and I'm going to put two stitches into that hole. And then you're going to work this side of your dishcloth exactly the same as the previous side over here. So you're going to put the same number of stitches, you're going to put two stitches into the first hole and two stitches into the last one. Then once that's done, I'm going to turn my work 90 degrees one last time and work one more row of single crochet all the way across the top. When you get to the end of your top row, you're going to see this little false stitch created by your chain. You're going to skip that, and then we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch of this round. To create a slip stitch, all you do is insert your hook into the stitch, wrap your yarn, pull through that stitch, and then pull through the loop on your hook. It's pretty similar to a single crochet, just without that second time wrapping your yarn around your hook. Then you're going to chain one, and now for this next round, I'm going to use half double crochet. You can use single crochet if you prefer, but I thought it might be fun to learn a new stitch. We're going to work two half double crochets into the first two stitches here and the last two stitches on this side and one half double crochet into all of the other stitches. A half double crochet is pretty similar to a single crochet, except you wrap your yarn before you insert the hook into the stitch. On the other side, you wrap your yarn again, pull through the stitch, wrap your yarn, and pull through all three loops on your hook. We're going to do this again into that same stitch. Wrap your yarn, insert, wrap your yarn, pull through, wrap your yarn, take off all three. And then we're going to do two of those again into the next stitch. So wrap your yarn, insert your hook into the stitch, wrap your yarn, pull through, wrap your yarn, pull all three loops off your hook. One more time, wrap your yarn, insert into the stitch, wrap your yarn again, pull through, wrap your yarn, pull through all three loops on your hook. Now I'm going to keep doing this until I get to these two stitches right here. You can see they're going into the same hole from our previous row. All right, so I've reached my corner. These two stitches from the previous round, as well as the first stitch on the bottom of our dishcloth, make up a corner, and we're going to put two half double crochets into each of these. So that's a total of six half double crochets into these three stitches. Now I'm going to add one half double crochet into each stitch along the bottom until I get to my next corner, which again is made up of one stitch here and these two stitches on the side. And we'll put two half double crochets into each of those. And then we'll just repeat that around for the rest of the dishcloth. Now I finished half double crocheting all the way around my dishcloth and I'm back. I'm at the last stitch of the top of the dishcloth and I'm gonna put two half double crochets into this stitch. We're going to ignore that false stitch again, find the first stitch of our previous row, and slip stitch into it again. Just to review, to slip stitch, you insert your hook into the stitch, wrap your yarn, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. And then you chain one. Now in this round, we're going to single crochet once into the first stitch of our corner and then single crochet twice into the next stitch. And then once, then twice into the next stitch. And then I'm going to put one single crochet into each stitch along the side until I reach my next corner. And we can see the six stitches that we made for our corner in the previous round. I've reached the six stitches that form the corner. 
I'm going to single crochet once into the first stitch, twice into the next one, then once, then twice, then once, then twice, for a total of nine single crochets across these six stitches of the corner. And that's what we're gonna do for the rest of this round of your border. Just single crochet into each stitch along the edges, and then on corners, one single crochet, then two, then one, then two, then one, then two. I'm gonna finish crocheting around this stitch cloth and I'll meet you back at the last stitch up here. Alrighty, so I'm at the last stitch of this round and we're gonna do something a little different here. We're gonna single crochet once and then I'm going to chain eight and this will create that loop that'll allow you to hang up your dish cloth. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Then I'm going to insert my hook back into that same stitch and create another single crochet. And you'll see that that secures our loop. Then we're going to find the first stitch of this round and slip stitch. And then we're going to chain one and cut your yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail for sewing. You can't just make a knot and cut the thread really close to it instead of sewing in your ends because your project will unravel if you do that. So instead, we've got that chain one, I cut my yarn, and I'm just going to pull straight upward with my hook to pull the tail of that yarn through the chain and then pull on my tail to tighten that knot. Now all that's left is to weave in our ends. So you're gonna grab your yarn needle, thread it, And then what I like to do is find this stitch right here and just kind of insert my needle so that it goes underneath these stitches. So I put my needle under about 10 stitches here and I'm gonna pull all the way through. Then I'm gonna turn my needle around. Obviously you can't put it right back in the same place because it'll just pull out what you just did. So I usually skip one loop of this stitch, insert my needle again, and go back the other way. Making sure that you turn around and go back the other way will further secure your work and make sure that the tail end of your yarn doesn't come out. I'm just pulling on this a little bit um, to even out that bump. And then I'm going to take my scissors and cut as close to the dishcloth as I can. And there you have your dishcloth. These make awesome gifts. There are also a ton of organizations that donate them. So go crazy. I hope that you enjoyed making these. Happy crocheting!